that's that's the good news of what we're talking about. That that um, I have found that that consistent practice and transfer of training really leads to the, that consistent peace and also to joy. I have a lot of people that will contact me and they'll say, I'm, I'm getting some good glimpses of peace, but I'm not joyful. I'm not really ecstatic about this. I'm not feeling consistent joy bubbling up in my heart and everything, like a fountain flowing. And to me, it's the, it's the transfer of training, it's the not making exceptions. And it, it does relate to the previous question too about about making exceptions. You know, you will never hear me talking about masculine and feminine, for example, because there is no masculine energy or feminine energy. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit is not masculine or feminine, and I, I'll go through all kinds of depths to talk about pure non-duality, which is joyful, and there's no suffering and sacrifice in my path because there's no duality in it. And, and I'll do the same with different things, spiritualizing matter, saying, you know, this, this river's sacred, or this person's sacred, or, you know, this vortex in such and such a place. Um, you'll never hear me talking about sacred sites or sacred spots on earth, for example, because I come from a teaching that says the holiest spot on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. <laughs> you know, where there's forgiveness, that's, that's sacred, you know, that's an, a gateway into the sacred. So there's a lot of those things that I would say that, that those are misinterpretations, misperceptions that still involve some element of sacrifice and, and also bring with them some sense of pain at some point. Uh, when the bubble starts to pop and you've been clinging to the bubble, then there's, it's psychologically experienced as painful. And um, I would say um, we could talk a lot to that because it's through this non-compromising approach, that's where the, the joy comes in, the bursting joy that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah it was coming to me right now, it's trust for some reason. I, I just read a paragraph to David this morning before leaving. I wrote, uh, two days ago I think I was trying to rest and I couldn't just because I had so much love pouring through, so much energy. And I just say, okay, I cannot rest, I'm gonna, I need to write. And so I took my computer and it just, <laughs> it just came through in such a strong way. And I added a paragraph to the thing that I read to David this morning. It, it was about trust. And it was about that when you make the decision to trust, you see that everything is really coming your way as an opportunity to go deeper and, and realizing who you are, to be free in the moment. It doesn't need to take time and to, to really accept the truth of, of who you are, whatever is there. And when you make the decision to not trust, or when you are doubtful about what is, what is given, which is truly what's arising every moment, then you have the reflection of that too. And so I feel that in my experience, when, when there was intensity and that I had the thought that it shouldn't be that way, it should be different, then it would feel painful and it would feel like suffering because I was resisting to whatever was arising in the moment. But when you know your purpose and that the only thing that you want in life is awakening to your true nature, you trust that there's one who is, you know, just in charge of the process and that everything that's arising is serving the process, is serving the purpose that you have your focus on. And by that, it really feels, in my experience, that how, however intense it could have been, it was never, it was never painful anymore. I could go through just having to face very deep beliefs and crying and being in pain in the body, but somewhere it would never feel like suffering. It would never feel there was something wrong with it. And to release, and I feel like that's really what the Course is talking about, the happy learner, the release was really in that actually, in allowing, again, allowing the movement to be what it is and to trust, to trust that the process is exactly the way it's supposed to be, to trust that the plan of the Spirit is perfect and I don't need to be the one in charge. I can just allow it to be exactly as it is. And there's nothing wrong with 
having some pain, there's nothing wrong with having rage coming up, there's nothing wrong with having many tears. And, and just, just giving yourself the space is tremendously helpful. And I feel that, yeah, this, this joy is coming from not compromising any part. Because anything that you would reject from the sonship is a decision to be apart from God. And so total no compromise is for me the only way to know this joy. And it is, it is amazing because the way that, that the Course is teaching or that we live uh, in community or that David is, is uh, teaching is really um, teaching through attraction, inspiration. We talk a lot about inspiration. Our whole life is about inspiration and following this joy in the heart, wherever there is a spark, wherever, wherever there is a tickle, wherever you feel like, mm, yeah, that feels really good, just go for it. Because the Spirit will use everything that you are passionate about, everything that is inspiring you, to bring you deeper and deeper in the awareness of who you are, undoing everything you believe, and, and allowing that to just bring you deeper. And so I feel like this is the joyful path, really. It's just learning that, again, this need not be. Like there's a chapter four, I think, of the Course, is this need not be. This need not be painful. This need not be suffering. And as long as there's a belief that it needs to be hard in order for it to work, uh, then it will be. But it can truly be gentle, and it depends on wherever you put your mind in. If you put your mind in the ego, it will be painful. If you resist what's given, it will be painful. But you can really let go of the branches on the side and let the river carry you. And, and that, is, that is gentleness. And that is, sure, leading you to joy. It can only be. Yeah. And if you want to keep it really super simple, uh, I always so wide open with this beautiful idea, God's will for me is perfect happiness. So if I'm not experiencing perfect happiness, then it must be that I've decided somewhere in my mind that God's will for me is not my will for me. But God's will for me is perfect happiness, meaning God's will for Christ is perfect happiness, meaning that Christ and God share the same will for perfect happiness. So every time there's a sense of pain or suffering, that means that there must be some decision made in mind to go against God's will. But that's crazy, you know, to try to will apart from the Creator, apart from the Source. So it's like a purge, it's a purification, a purification of desire, really through trust, is really what we're talking about. And so deeply trusting that whenever anything comes up that's unlike perfect happiness, that's the time to, to be willing to open up and let go of whatever is being protected. There's some kind of belief, crazy alien belief down there, that actually still is trying to uh, hold on to this sense that there's something other than God's will. And it's a very simple practice of purification then. And it's more like a yielding, yielding into God's will, instead of trying to put up a defense against it. Yeah. Beautiful. I wanna, yeah, it's something that you shared just um, stayed with me, because you were sharing that you always had a lot of emotion, and it was not allowed, and, and then it made, me, it made you feel like you cannot trust it. You cannot trust what's there, and it definitely was the same thing for me. Um, I just felt I was somewhere so psychic since a little girl, and really having this feeling that I was feeling everything for the whole world, or even more lately, it's been it, it's been stronger. But feeling like I always knew where everyone was at, or I always felt what's what was going on, and I couldn't understand actually the world how you how it was because I felt every, everyone was always hiding and um, and I feel that truly uh, my path those last years has been about opening up opening up and opening up and start trusting and so I've been given all the assignment or the symbols or different uh, function to really start to trust what I was feeling 
and and to really open up that I hear the Holy Spirit, I do. He's always been there. He has always been there, and I always heard him. I just didn't know who he was. <laughs> I just didn't know what 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 this voice was. Nobody told me about it, and I often just didn't want to follow it. And I I just had to very very be honest with me and 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 to really just see how the spirit has given me the symbols i needed in order to open up and start trusting i can say that traveling with david and, and joining with him has been very deeply helpful for that because he is really the decision is the reflection of the decision in my mind where i don't want to do any compromise and so everything that would come through as a guidance, I would just join with him about it and he would just keep supporting, supporting. And because this mistrust was so strong in my mind, I cannot trust myself. And underneath that, I can tell you there was a belief like, I'm afraid of misleading anyone, or I'm afraid of being in control, or I'm afraid of this power. I'm afraid that I have power over others and I could misuse it somewhere. And so because that was there, even when he, he would support something, I would doubt it. I would like, oh, maybe, maybe he's supporting because he sees how unworthy I believe I am and therefore he will just try to make me confident. He's really not thinking that way at all. <laughs> at all. He's only supporting the spirit. And the beautiful thing that I feel the spirit is just so awesome for that is that I always feel that the Spirit put me in a role and then put me in another role that is exactly the opposite. Someone I would be the one, sometimes I would be the one supporting and some, sometimes I, I would be the one being supported. And that would allow me to really be, be in touch with both ways. When I was supported and, I, and if I had any unworthiness in my mind or that I would just feel really not worthy of God's trust, of God's love, I would doubt what the other was tell, would tell me and I would use the other to be the reflection of all those doubt thoughts so I would not take any steps. If the other was not confirming what I was feeling, I would just stay in fear and instead of necessarily stepping into what I was feeling and start trusting myself, I would just stay this little, I would just really stay stuck in the littleness and, and when I was the one being so supportive, I would actually see that the only thing that I would support in the other was the spirit. I would just join and hear yes, no. And I would clearly say it because in my heart, I just want this no compromise approach. So wh whatever I would feel the spirit would say, I would just like, yes, yeah, I feel it. I'm with you. Go for it. Yeah, really just support whatever was from the Spirit and whatever I would feel that is not from the Spirit. Then I would just say, no, I don't feel it. No, I don't feel that. And we would join. And that's what we do in, in, in our community. We join on decision all the time so that we can start trusting, so that we can, we, we can start to really know how to discern the Holy Spirit's voice from the egos and to see, okay, when I feel that way, then I can trust. And if I don't feel that way, maybe if I have any doubt, I can join with one of my brother who has the same purpose as I do and, and to really be wanting to go for the clarity in the mind and wanting to go for following the guidance of the Spirit. And all those uh, assignments were given for only one purpose, to really trust that I was hearing the Holy Spirit and to speak it up and to follow it. And I could see that underneath that there was a fear of following the Spirit and, and often like it was sponsored also by uh, this, this belief that somewhere I wasn't worthy of God's love and I needed to keep it away or I needed to perfect myself first, then I could really allow, allow God's love to pour through. And so I do feel that, you know, when your heart is really going for it, you will receive all the support that you need in order to really uh, step into that, step into speaking up, step into uh, sharing the message of Christ that is going through you and, and being able to really know the, the truth of who you are by, by extending it. And there's a movie that I love that I watched not so long ago called Always and there's one sentence in that movie that I think it summarizes everything I just said is pain is when love is withhold. And that's really what it is, is that anytime I hold back the flow of the spirit 
anytime I hold back anything, then I feel separate and then I'm in pain. But when I allow the spirit to speak through me, to use this form as he wants, then there is just this perfect flow of love. There isn't any specialness in that because there isn't anyone in that. There is just a flow of love. And we have to come to realize that, that truly we are the one responsible for the way we feel. And we can make another choice at any time. So I think most people can relate to this idea there's been a lot of denial and repression, you know, that has gone on. So in working so closely with Armel and really with lots of people over the years, there's a great allowance for expression. People can come together and express, you know, what are you feeling? What are your ideas? What are your inspirations? What are your doubts? Express, express, express. Because I can feel the peace and the strength and the stability of the Spirit within me and there's such patience with that, you know, there's, there's no push with that, there's no forcing anything. Uh, also, it's the Spirit, even though the Spirit is infinitely patient, it's also when you're with a group of people and you live in community with a bunch of people and if it gets into gridlock where everybody's expressing, expressing and nothing's moving, like the, you can't even agree on where you're going to go for a restaurant, <laughs> you know, because everybody's so expressive. No! Not Chinese again, or whatever, you know, everybody's this, this and that. Then, then you know, nobody, nothing happens. You, you, you can't move forward with the Spirit's plan, which is just what's given. So there's been this enormous allowance. One time I was in a, a car with a group of students up in uh, Michigan, and we were driving along, maybe like five of us in the car, and, um, and we were driving along, just having come from a gathering, and they started all discussing what they wanted for dinner, and, and so all of the, you know, let's get this, I want that, no, no, not that, no, please not that, this and this, so they were all bantering on, on and on, just chattering about everybody try, forcefully trying to say where they wanted to stop for dinner. So I just kind of listened to the whole group and the only one that was just quiet, was not voicing all these strong, strong opinions, was uh, Rhonda who was driving the, the vehicle. So as they went on and on and on for quite some time, maybe a half an hour, but just blasting away, you know, this and this, I said, uh, Rhonda's driving the car and wherever Rhonda pulls in for dinner tonight is where we're having dinner. Ah! You know, the ego screams, you know. <laughs> and so we get into the restaurant, she pulls over, we go into the restaurant, the big thick menu. And everyone's like, I can see them all working, going through, reading the menu. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just reading through the menu, reading. again, bogged down in so many choices that they're like, totally, now that they got over the first scream about where we were going to be, then they were going through the menu. So again I looked around at the table and I saw who was just sitting there with their hands resting quietly on the menu in deep meditation. And I looked over at this person and I said, this person right here, they will select for the whole group. <laughs> ah! It <laughs> just spent a half an hour <laughs> trying to figure out what they're going to eat. And so the person was like, Okay, we're all going to have this and this and this. And you see how this is a pathway of letting go of judgments, preferences, and trusting in the Spirit that all things are working together for good. And you want to decide with God, you want to let these beautiful decisions, like the prayer of the heart is, Holy Spirit decide for God, for me. You want to be in this place of yielding allowance for that, because it undoes this egoic sense of, okay, I have my own power of choice now, and I know what's best for my happiness. Even though the workbook of A Course in Miracles says, in no situation do you perceive your own best interest. In no situation, it doesn't say in most situations, or in some situations, it says in no situation do you perceive your own best interest. Very shortly after that, Jesus will say a beautiful sentence, everything is in your own best interest. Mm. Everything? What? 
everything sounds a little bit like all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Sounds a little bit like let all things be exactly as they are. Sounds a little bit like, and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. And what's that Elisa Moore thing? It is impossible for anything to come to me unbidden by myself. Even in this world, it is I that rule my destiny. What happens is what I desire, and what does not occur is what I do not want to happen. Wow! No room for victimization in those teachings. No room for, oh, but, 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 if only, if only, if only, if only. It really is crystal clear, but you see it takes that uncompromising devotion to really want that God's will. You know, that's really what it comes down to, and if you really want it, then you will have it. It's just, have, prayers are answered. If that's the calling of your heart, then you will know it. 